Hi, I'm George and welcome to part 36 of the Horizon series. Now this week, as we prepare to start joining the individual booster segments together, we need to make up a bunch of brackets, some couplers, extra tubes. So anyway, let's go have a look how that's done. First up, we're going to make the lower brackets shown in pink here. These hold the pressure chambers together, but provide clearance for the release mechanism that's shown in green. We're going to start off by making a carbon fibre tube whose inner diameter is the same as the outer diameter of the booster pressure chamber. The mandrel that we're using is a section of an old pressure chamber prototype that used exactly the same construction technique as the boosters we're now using. This means it's exactly the same diameter as the flight hardware. The tube's made from three wraps of 200 GSM plain weave carbon fibre cloth. We also have a single layer of 85 GSM fiberglass over the top of that for a smoother finish. The rolling process is identical to what we've done in the past to make similar tubes. Here I'm brushing the surface to remove any tiny bubbles that may have formed from the roller. A set of heat lamps makes the epoxy set a little quicker. The next day we can remove the tube from the mandrel. The end of the tube is trimmed and sanded to make it nice and square. We ended up making three of these as that is how much material we're going to need. Here is a test of how snugly the tube fits on the pressure chamber. Time to mark up the tube into sections. This is the messy part. We are now using a Dremel with a diamond wheel to cut through the carbon fiber instead of a hacksaw. The diamond wheel cuts through the tube like a knife through butter. But as you can see, there's lots of dust that's generated and so it's best done outside. We then have to sand each of the sections as the diamond wheel leaves pretty sharp edges. And here are all the bracket pads made from a couple of the tubes. The brackets themselves are made from a 3mm carbon plate we bought. The plate gets the same treatment from the Dremel. This is the master template we made back in episode 25. The master template gives us the real dimensions and spacing for the booster segments. We can now put on the bracket pads and secure them in place. The brackets themselves will sit on top like this. But first we must bevel the ends so that the reinforcing that will go over the top won't have a giant step in it. Before gluing we give everything a nice sand with 120 grit sandpaper and then wipe everything down with methylated spirits. We use 24 hour araldite to tack everything together. And we repeat that two more times. Now it's time to reinforce those joints. We're using 10 layers of 85 GSM fiberglass cloth with each layer switching weave direction from 0 to 90 degrees to 45 and 45 degrees. This helps with strengthening against twisting. The layers also change in length in order to feather the edges a little bit better. The next day we can do the inside corners.
we do this a little differently. We first assemble all the layers on a piece of baking paper and wet them out thoroughly. We're putting on two layers at a time as this makes it go faster. Then we take the baking paper with the wetted out cloth, bend it and jam it into the joint. Then the sides get pressed down with the paddle pop stick. The whole thing's then left to cure with paddle pop sticks keeping everything in place. The next day we remove the paper and clean everything up. Here are the brackets complete with a little bit more sanding left to go before they'll be painted. And this is how they'll fit onto the booster. Now we need to make a bunch of couplers. They are narrower than the pressure chamber mandrel, so we 3D printed the exact size we needed, but fitted it over an existing pipe to save on filament. The couplers are fairly short, so the mandrel doesn't need to be very long. Normally we take the couplers from the PVC mandrel, but doing it this way saves us about 160 grams. The coupler then gets split into two. The larger one will be mounted on top of the pressure chamber to hold the payload bay tube. This is a prototype one. The smaller one then fits on top of the tube to hold the nose cone in place. We'll see these in upcoming videos. The tops of the pressure chambers where the shock cords are attached need to be reinforced. The reinforcing starts from this solid piece of PVC. A bit of machining later, we end up with a pair of these. Since we only have two parachutes on the booster, the third pressure chamber doesn't need this reinforcing. They're just glued in place with epoxy. The pins that hold the shock cord are made from these hardened diner bolts. To make drilling the hole in the end of the pressure chamber easier, we made this jig that aligns everything. The pin is then friction fit in place. Time now to make up some payload bay tubes. These aren't pressurized, so we don't need to make them from carbon fiber. We're just using plain weave 200 GSM fiberglass. Since we have a mandrel long enough, it's the same one that we used for the pressure chambers, we can make all three payload sections at the same time. These can then be cut up into individual tubes.
When the deployment mechanisms complete, these will be shortened to the size like this prototype. Here are all the components we made in this video. And here are the three tube diameters neatly telescoping into one another. So that's it for this week. With only about three months left before the expected launch, there's a huge amount of work to do. Uh, so we'll try and keep updates uh, done as much as we can. Uh, but our primary focus is going to be on trying to get the rocket finished. Uh, but anyway, stay tuned. Uh, we'll update you as soon as we can. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.